Section 7 of the Dhammapada Chapter 26 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Dhammapada Translated by F. Max Müller Chapter 26 the Brahmana Arhat Stop the stream valiantly, drive away the desires, O Brahmana. When you have understood the destruction of all that was made, you will understand that which was not made. If the Brahmana has reached the other shore in both laws, in restraint and contemplation, all bonds vanish from him who has obtained knowledge. He for whom there is neither this nor that shore, nor both him the fearless and unshackled, I call indeed a Brahmana. He who is thoughtful, blameless, settled, dutiful, without passions, and who has attained the highest end, I call him indeed a Brahmana. The sun is bright by day, the moon shines by night. The warrior is bright in his armor, the brahmana is bright in his meditation, but Buddha, the awakened, is bright with splendor day and night. Because a man is rid of evil, therefore he is called brahmana. Because he walks quietly, therefore he is called samana. Because he has sent away his own impurities, Therefore he is called Pravragita, Pavagita, a pilgrim. No one should attack a Brahmana, but no Brahmana, if attacked, should let himself fly at his aggressor. Woe to him who strikes a Brahmana, more woe to him who flies at his aggressor. It advantages a Brahmana not a little if he holds his mind back from the pleasures of life. When all wish to injure has vanished, pain will cease. Him I call indeed a Brahmana who does not offend by body, word, or thought, and is controlled on these three points. After a man has once understood the law as taught by the well-awakened Buddha, let him worship it carefully as the Brahmana worships the sacrificial fire. A man does not become a Brahmana by his plaited hair, by his family, or by birth. In whom there is truth and righteousness, he is blessed, he is a Brahmana. What is the use of plaited hair, O fool? What of the raiment of goat skins? Within thee there is ravening, but the outside thou makest clean. The man who wears dirty raiments, who is emaciated and covered with veins, who lives alone in the forest and meditates, I call him indeed a Brahmana. I do not call a man a Brahmana because of his origin or of his mother. He is indeed arrogant and he is wealthy, but the poor who is free from all attachments, him I call indeed a Brahmana. Him I call indeed a Brahmana who has cut all fetters, who never trembles, is independent and unshackled. Him I call indeed a Brahmana who has cut the strap and the thong, the chain with all that pertains to it, who has burst the bar and is awakened. Him I call indeed a Brahmana who, though he has committed no offense, endures reproach, bonds and stripes, who has endurance for his force and strength for his army. Him I call indeed a Brahmana who is free from anger, dutiful, virtuous, without appetite, who is subdued and has received his last body. Him I call indeed a Brahmana who does not cling to pleasures like water on a lotus leaf, like a mustard seed on the point of a needle. 
Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who, even here, knows the end of his suffering, has put down his burden, and is unshackled. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, whose knowledge is deep, who possesses wisdom, who knows the right way and the wrong, and has attained the highest end. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who keeps aloof both from laymen and from mendicants, who frequents no houses, and has but few desires. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who finds no fault with other beings, whether feeble or strong, and does not kill nor cause slaughter. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who is tolerant with the intolerant, mild with fault-finders, and free from passion among the passionate. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, from whom anger and hatred, pride and envy, have dropped like a mustard seed from the point of a needle. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who utters true speech, instructive and free from harshness, so that he offend no one. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who takes nothing in the world that is not given him, be it long or short, small or large, good or bad. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who fosters no desires for this world or for the next, has no inclinations, and is unshackled. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who has no interests, and when he has understood the truth, does not say how, how, and who has reached the depth of the immortal. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who in this world is above good and evil, above the bondage of both, free from grief from sin and from impurity. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who is bright like the moon, pure, serene, undisturbed, and in whom all gaiety is extinct. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who has traversed this miry road, the impassable world and its vanity, who has gone through and reached the other shore, is thoughtful, guileless, free from doubts, free from attachment and content. Him I call indeed a Brahmana who in this world, leaving all desires, travels about without a home, and in whom all concupiscence is extinct. Him I call indeed a Brahmana who, leaving all longings, travels about without a home, and in whom all covetousness is extinct. Him I call indeed a Brahmana who, after leaving all bondage to men, has risen above all bondage to the gods, and is free from all and every bondage. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who has left what gives pleasure and what gives pain, who is cold and free from all germs of renewed life, the hero who has conquered all the worlds. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who knows the destruction and the return of beings everywhere, who is free from bondage, welfaring, sugata, and awakened, Buddha. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, whose path the gods do not know, nor spirits, Gandharvas, nor men whose passions are extinct, and who is an Arhat, venerable. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who calls nothing his own, whether it be before, behind, or between, who is poor and free from the love of the world. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, the manly, the noble, the hero, the great sage, the conqueror, the impassable, the accomplished, the awakened. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who knows his former abodes, who sees heaven and hell, 
and has reached the end of births, is perfect in knowledge, a sage, and whose perfections are all perfect. End of Section 7 End of the Dhammapada Translated by F. Max Muller Recording by Scott Robbins